into the fourth episode of Art Time with Miss B. Today we're going to be doing two uh, separate drawing projects. Um, the first one is going to be a self-portrait where we're going to walk through um, kind of the steps of drawing a more realistic face. Um, and then twist at the end, we're going to decorate and color these self-portraits. Um, I'm going to show you three different ways based on three different um, famous artists, okay? And then the second project at the end will be like kind of like a quick, fun little doodle that you can use um, your devices, either a phone or an iPad, your devices like camera to do kind of fun, cool I spy pictures. So let's get started. All right, so the materials you're gonna need are a piece of paper, a pencil with an eraser, make sure it has an eraser, a felt tip marker or a small Sharpie for outlining, and lastly, coloring materials. All right, so to get started, what we're gonna do is start by drawing the head. Now, human heads are like kind of like an upside down egg shape. So that's what I'm gonna draw. The smaller part at the bottom is gonna be where the chin is. I'm gonna make the neck and the shoulders next, and then draw in my little shirt. Then what I'm gonna do is draw what we call guidelines. Um, these guidelines are gonna tell me where the different parts of my face is gonna be. Pause the drawing right there because I wanted to talk a little bit more about guidelines. Now, the guidelines um, help the artist know where to draw the certain facial features. It helps us, these guidelines help us draw more realistically. So after you've drawn the head and the shoulders and the neck and everything, you're gonna lightly draw guidelines. The first one you're going to draw is the vertical guideline. This is going to help us figure out where the middle of our face is. Okay. This is going to also help us separate, you know, the right and the left side of the face. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to draw the guideline for the eyes. This is approximately halfway between the top of the head and the chin. So it's halfway. Then the next one we're going to draw is the guideline that's going to be where the bottom of our nose is going to be. That guideline is going to be about halfway between the eye guideline and the chin. So right about there. And then the last guideline we're going to draw is the one for the middle of the mouth. And that guideline is going to be halfway between the nose guideline and your chin. Again, draw these lightly because we're we are going to erase them later. Okay, so once we got our guidelines drawn, what we're gonna do is on the first guideline, we're gonna draw our eyes. Once I got those eyes, they're kind of like football shapes. I'm gonna erase the guidelines around them because I don't need them anymore. Then I'm gonna draw in the top lid of my eye. And then I'm gonna draw the iris and then some eyebrows. Oh, there's Pippin. Hi, Pippin. And then I'm gonna draw in some eyelashes. And then finally the pupil. Next, I'm gonna go to the bottom of my nose guideline. I'm gonna start drawing my nose. I always start with a little U shape. And then I'm gonna go up and back down for the nostrils, making these C's on the other end. And then I'm gonna draw the bridge of my nose, kind of connecting those up a little bit to the eyebrows. And I can then erase the guideline for the bottom of the nose and then the center guideline up to the mouth. Lastly, we're gonna draw, oh, Pippin's back. We're gonna draw the mouth. So I'm gonna give myself a slight smile and then draw in the lips. And then finally erase the rest of the guidelines because I don't need them anymore. Now once I got these done, I'm going to add things like my glasses. All right. Then I'm going to, yeah, finish drawing up my glasses. Okay. Then the next I'm going to draw is my 
ears. The ears go from about where your eyes are to the where about the bottom of your nose um, in the shape. So I got to draw my earrings. And the next is the hair. And the hair is kind of the tricky part. So I had to take a picture of myself so I could see where my hair was. And for me, I have very short hair, so I don't have to add a ton of hair. Um, but once I got everything drawn with a pencil, I'm going to go ahead and outline it with my felt tip marker. Um, again, I have my Pippin supervisor supervising me. Um, I like outlining my drawings just because it's a little bit easier to see. And um, especially when we start coloring them in, it will be easier to see my drawing. So now we're just going to speed up the drawing a little bit so we can get to the coloring part. Okay, the first coloring style that I thought would be kind of fun to try is inspired by Henri Matisse. Henri Matisse was an artist, a French-born artist, and back when he was starting out his career, he joined with this fellow group of artists and they called themselves the Fauves, thus creating Fauvism as an as a art period. Uh, the reason they called themselves the Fauves, and if you were to translate that, uh, Fauves in French means wild ones. And that was because um, when Henri Matisse first unveiled these portraits, um, you'll notice that he painted the skin in weird ways and used different colors. And it offended people so much that he did this, that they called him a fauve and they called him a wild one. Instead of, and instead of being like, oh, I don't like that, he kind of embraced that term and kind of ran with it. So we're going to be inspired by Henri Matisse and the fauves and color in our self-portrait this way. So just like Henry Matisse, I decided to not use like traditional skin colors, but instead use lots of different colors to sort of show the areas of my skin. A lot of blues and greens. It may look really weird at first, but it's okay because we are being like Henry Matisse. Um, I decided to use oil pastels uh, just because I love how bold and bright the colors are. I know, me painting my hair, or me coloring my hair blue is not too weird for Miss Brown. Um, but once I get my face and my shirt colored in, and it doesn't really matter if I'm scribbly because it's kind of, I'm trying to be like a wild one. I decided to do chalk pastels in the background because I could cover more area quickly. Um, and I could do some really nice blending with the chalk pastels. And the final product looks like this. Um, I think Henry Matisse would be very proud of my picture. Notice that I have lots of nice like colors all over the place and I'm like messy and it's totally fun. It's totally wild one. It's totally fauve. Our next coloring style will be brought to you by Miss Brown's favorite artist, Frida Kahlo. Now, Frida Kahlo did a lot of self-portraits in her time as an artist, a lot of times using animals and other objects in her self-portraits to represent, like, how she felt. But for you, you could add, like I did, you could add in um, animals that have special meaning to you, like my pets. So let's see how that went. So I did a basic outline of me and my pets. I have my two cats and my tortoise. Um, what I did then is I chose chalk pastels to sort of color in the background because again, I like how smudgy they are and how much I can fill in. Now, I, I tried to do the chalk pastels for my cats, but it got a little messy because I have an all black cat. So the details on him weren't quite as good as I would have liked. Um, so maybe if I had to do this again, I'd probably do oil pastels for the black cat. But using a mixture of oil, of oil and chalk pastels and other art materials is always a good way to finish up a picture. So let's take a look at the final product. And there you go, my Frida Kahlo inspired self portrait. 
portrait. Me and my pets. Our last coloring style is going to be brought to you by a Minneapolis-born Native American artist named Frank Big Bear. Frank Big Bear is an artist that I think is just super cool because the way he colors a self-portrait is inspired by the city, Minneapolis itself. He often describes the way he colors it in with all those intersecting lines, like the streets of the city. And then he chooses these big, bold colors. What I really love about these is that it takes you a little bit of time to find where the face is. So it's kind of like an eye spy and a work of art all in one. So let's see how Miss Brown did on her Frank Big Bear inspired self-portrait. I have to admit this one took probably the longest time to color in because I started out drawing these shapes with my pencil and then coloring in each shape with the markers. It did take a little bit of time so this one does this style of coloring does take a lot of patience um, but the end product looks really cool. So. So we have three different ways of coloring in your self-portrait. You can choose one, you can try to do all three. It'd be kind of fun to see and then compare them at the end. Um, our last one, our last drawing project is going to be a little bit uh, simpler, a little bit more fun. I call these I Spy Doodles. So let's take a look. All right, so what these are is we're just going to draw like a cute little character. Um, I draw mine in the kawaii style. I'm just drawing a little monster. First, I start with pencil, so if I make a mistake, I can erase it. After I'm done with that, I'm going to grab a felt tip marker, and I'm going to outline my doodle. That way, I can always see it. After I'm done outlining, I'm going to grab some markers and I'm gonna color in my little monster. You can make it as many colors as you want. Then you're gonna take and you're going to carefully cut out around your little monster, making sure to get into all of those little areas. Um, Cut, cut them out and then when you're done we will move on to the next part now the last thing we're gonna do with our little doodle is we're gonna set up a cool photo session where you're gonna grab like your phone or an iPad or a digital camera and you're gonna set your little doodle in a space and you're gonna step way back not too far back but way back making sure you can still see your little doodle, snap a pic, and then see if friends and family can spy your little doodle guy. Okay, so let's see Miss Brown's example. Okay, can you spy Miss Brown's doodle guy? How about now? Can you find him? Wow, we did so much today. Thank you so much for sticking around. Um, I would always, always, always love to see your examples. Um, you can go ahead and e email them to Ms. Brown at, or you can leave them down in the comments. As we sign off today, as always, I'd like to show you examples um, your examples from the art we did last week. So until next time, we'll see you later. Bye!